love, it is Pixie. This is Jill, mostly. I am here today to do a video that I have teased for a little bit and I am finally ready. I think it is the perfect time to share with you the wonders and the joy of crochet. One of my besties, M, taught me how to crochet in our final year of fashion design school together and it absolutely changed my life. And with Christmas and the other holidays coming up, I thought it was a really perfect time to do a beginner basics how to crochet video here. So I know this is kind of not a niche video, but it is one where it's not just like a vlog. So if this isn't your cup of tea and you're not here for a learning moment, you could even um, save it to watch later if you feel like or just you know scoot along by I have lots of other kinds of content but this is time for a little bit of a learning moment because you can pick it up really quick don't be discouraged if it's tricky at first once you master one stitch you can make almost anything and it's excellent for gifts since I learned how to crochet uh, so many of my gifts to people have been crocheted it is cost-effective it is loving and it can be super custom you can make like exactly what someone wants it's also so versatile you can make homeware like blankets pillows rugs I have a crochet rug right beneath me wall hangings coasters and of course wearables skirts bralettes like not just winter things like hats and scarves and mittens like I've made like a little like slutty little two-piece bralette mini skirt moments the sky is the limit with crochet so this video is going to be one that I do with timestamps I'm gonna figure out how to do that so that you can skip along in case you already know some bits and bobs or you want to come back um, and rewind also don't be discouraged if you struggle with um, the motions at first I promise once it clicks, you are flying. When Em was teaching me how to crochet, I was like laughing hysterically at first because I just couldn't get it. And the second it clicked in, I was like flying. Zoop zap zoop bralette, zoop zap zoop sweater, beep boop bop scarf. So I want to bestow that power upon you guys. And what better time than right before the holidays, make your grandma a scarf. Last year I made my granny and my granddad scarves and they loved them, it was sweet. So let's start by chatting about different yarns and different hooks. So with knitting, you use needles, and with crochet, you use hooks. With knitting, I think usually you have two. I have no idea how to knit. But with crochet, you just have one of these bad boys. I have many because they're in different sizes for different sizes of yarn. There's also different terminology depending on what area of the world you're in. It's like US and UK terminology. I'm Canadian, so I kind of pick and choose. I think I usually go for the UK stuff, but I will put up a handy dandy little chart here. I often refer to the hooks as their millimeter size, like this one is an eight millimeter, this one is a nine millimeter. That just clicks more and makes more sense in my brain, but I believe they also go by like G, H, B, J, K, L, like it's a lot to wrap your head around, so just pick one and stick with it. But be aware that there are two sets of terms, not just for the crochet hooks, but also for the different stitches. I'll get into that later. Yarn is also a varied and interesting world of many sorts and types, same thing, different ways that it's wound up or not. I am still kind of a beginner to the types of yarn world. I Well, maybe not. My knowledge from school does help me out a bit because I know like if it's acrylic versus wool versus cotton versus whatever. I know whether it's gonna like pill or not and I know whether it's gonna like melt or not. There's this like fuzzy ropey yarn where it's like one thread with a bunch of other little fuzzy things shooting out of them. And there's all types of super fun yarn you can find too it does become quite addicting. Try not to collect too much yarn at the start because it can just, I I'm warning you also with crochet, it might take over your life because it definitely did to me. And I've heard a lot of people say the same thing. Like, yeah, you will become a yarn hoarder. You will never look at the yarn aisle the same way. Again, I've pretty much always had a project on the go ever since I learned how to crochet. Oh my God. But yeah, depending on what kind of project you want to make, just 
just pick your yarn accordingly. You can look up the different types, but the most common yarn and cheapest yarn is this four, five, six millimeter width of yarn is kind of the most common um, when you go into Michael's or Walmart and there's all of like this super affordable stuff usually will be this width. So now with the help of close-up camera pixie we are going to go over some of the most basic crochet stitches, terminology, and the little symbols for them that you'll find if you're reading patterns. And I'm gonna teach you how to do them visually. I am a very visual learner. It really helps to have a friend in person. Like that is what helped me for my friend to literally take their hands and like hold mine and teach me how. But I really hope that these visuals are clear and really really helpful and I hope that you are crocheting in no time. So the first little move you need to know is the crochet slip knot. This is what is going to get that yarn actually on your hook. All right, let's talk about the very first thing you need to know, which is the slip knot for crochet. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this, but I find it most easy and natural to take a loop like this, you kind of make a rectangle, cross them over like that, and then with these two little chomp chomp fingers, reach through. And look at him go! I'm sorry if I explain things kind of strangely. I'm not like the best teacher in the world, but I wanted to make this video as like a we're besties at a hangout and hopefully I explain it okay. So you want to have your two little ee -ee 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 fingers like this, your index and your thumb is what those are called. Twisty twist, grabby grab. You grab from the long length, not your little tail here. And then you are ready to slide that on a happy little hook. Yoink! So if that's number zero, this is like number one, which is the chain. Most projects are going to start with a chain. A chain is a super simple motion. You just repeat it over and over and over. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through and just do that many, many times. Now, when you're just starting crochet and you haven't done this motion, this, like it looks simple, but you might be just like, uh, messing around and struggling for a long time so I want to talk about where like what you want your fingers to be doing these fingers really are the stars of the show with crochet you're gonna use your index and your thumb and hold this tail here the little short end on the other side of your slip knot and then with your middle finger and your ring finger you are going to hold a little bit of tension for the rest of your yarn here and this would be attached to a ball or a cake or whatever however your yarn comes the tightness and the grip that you give on these two pieces of yarn, that's your tension. So if you're yanking crazy hard and really being a little bit aggressive with it, you're gonna get these teeny, tiny, tight little guys. Finding the perfect tension is a little bit of a trial and error, but once it clicks, it'll click for you and you'll be just stitching right along. So back to the chain stitch, again with these two fingers holding the long length of your yarn at a nice decent tension, you're gonna do what's called a yarn over, just like this, whoop, and pull through. This pulling through motion is also something I really, really struggled with when I was first learning on that very first day, and it's all about this little scoop angle. So you see how this hook is pointing up here? You wanna scoop the yarn with him, and then as you're pulling through that hole, that loop, you wanna twist it down, and if you don't do that, look what happens. Eh, eh. Yank, 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 oh no, oh no, cause you're yanking on him as well, you gotta go sly and sneak right by him. He won't even see you coming. And then you're just doop dee doop dee doop dee doop dee doop dee doop. And then look, oh my gosh, you have a lovely little chain. So again, for good measure, you have your tension nice here and here, yarn over, pull through, and you wanna twist, rotate that hook down as you're pulling through. La 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 la. After you've got your chain, you can start working into it with either single or double crochets. There are other stitches that you can learn later on, but to make pretty much anything and starting out just getting the hang of crochet, I think it would be really nice and clear and concise um, to learn just single crochet and double crochet first. Once you have your chain the length that you want, which will vary for whatever project you're doing, you can start actually crocheting. 
So I'm gonna start with the single crochet here. The way that you work with crochet, usually, if you're not doing it circular, you go left, right, left, right, left, right, bzz, 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 up kind of like a printer, like a scanner. Is that how scanners and printers work? So we've chained from basically left to right here, and now we're going to do one little stitch upward. That's what I like to do when I turn the corner. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to do this, but I like to do it just to match myself on the same kind of height. If this is confusing at this stage in the game, do not worry. But basically I'm gonna do one extra chain to be my little turning friend. And then I'm gonna start on my first single crochet. So basically all different crochet stitches are just different combinations and numbers of looping over and pulling through. And you guys have already done that if you've done everything I've taught in this video. So to do a single crochet, we're going to start working into this line of chains. The chain is basically there just to get you something to crochet into. And then after you have your first row of crochets and you just crochet into the that row of crochets. But it's basically the same system. So if you see all those little V shapes there, all those little holes in between, where those two lines of yarn meet in each chain, that's where you're gonna wanna crochet into. Single crochet happens in these steps. So you're gonna go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. So insert your hook through that hole, yarn over one, pull through, yarn over again, and pull through both of those. And now instead of holding your tail with your thumb and your index finger, you're holding that chain, and then your middle finger and your ring finger are the ones holding the tension on the rest of your yarn. So again, you go in first, boop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. It's also easier to see that little hole there and to work your stitches in on lighter color yarn, I find. So I wouldn't necessarily start with black yarn or super, super dark, like green or purple. Any dark colored yarn is gonna be a little bit harder to see what you're working with. I don't know why that is. That's just, that's just the way that like your eye, your cones and rods and your eyeballs work. And then you'll get to the end there, work into that very last one. Yarn over, pull through, and then I chain one, boop, yarn over, pull through, and then you're ready to flip back and work this way. The main difference between them is that single crochet is smaller and faster, I guess, kind of. And a double crochet is a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, but there's like bigger holes between your pieces. Double crochet is super similar to the single crochet. It's just a little bit beefier. It works up faster and it does have a little bit more of a holiness to it. And when you're turning a corner and adding this little height over here, for a single crochet, I add that one. I've kind of been gripping this firmly, so let me do it again in like a normal tension. If I'm doing double crochets, I'll often add two. And again, it's just because they're taller and it kind of gets you up working up here because you're working into here. I think it creates a little bit of a nicer square edge over here. A double crochet is just like a single crochet, except it's a little bit meatier and a little bit taller. It works up quicker and that's because you do just a couple extra steps. So for that double crochet, you're going to want to yarn over first before you insert, then insert, yarn over again, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Does it seem like a lot of steps? It might seem like a lot of words, but I promise once you get this in practice, you're just flying and you're not even thinking about it. There's something called a half double crochet where you yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and then you do one yarn over and pull through all of those three. It just depends on whatever your pattern calls for and whatever kind of effect you wanna get in your finished piece. And there we've got a nice line of single crochets and then double crochets. And you can see at the top there, yeah, you always end up with that same kind of V-shaped chain stitch similar thing going on, and that's just what you work into. But yeah, you can see here in the doubles, there's a little bit of a hole in between, whereas in the singles, it's a bit more meshy. Another really fun, awesome thing about crochet I should definitely mention is undoing your crochet or frogging it. But basically, crochet is extremely easy to undo. 
you just yank and you get all of your yarn back. Look, it's all gone. Boop. I love, 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 love this about crochet. It's great if you are inconsistent like me and sometimes you have other parts of your brain that like to come and try their very best, but they have tension that's all off and it's just wonky and disastrous. It's super easy to rip out. And it's also great if you start a project and then don't finish it and then you need that yarn. That also happened with my last project and I was able to salvage some from an unfinished blanket I started. There's also something called a magic circle, which is really, really handy if you are doing things in the round. That's great for things like hats, you can crochet berets, stuffed animals, or anything just with like a circular shape, hearts, flowers, spirals. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. The last thing I want to show you guys is how to make a magic circle. Um, I actually didn't understand this for the longest time when I was learning crochet. I thought it was just a slip knot and then you work into it in a circular way, but no, 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 because that circle slip knot is not as adjustable as this magic circle. I made a lot of flowers with yellow circular centers and for a lot of them I didn't do this proper magic circle technique and I really regret it. So definitely learn this and heed my warning. This is something I found really confusing and hard to get the hang of until I saw this little X over the fingers trick that really just made it make sense for me. So I take my yarn, I do a big X like this it's kind of an X over here and more of a V here because you want to go under this first yarn and over that second one and grab that. And then that's your magic circle. From here you can chain a couple and do some double crochets. So I just double crocheted six into here. You can pull the tail of your magic circle and it will go super tight. That is the magic of the circle. And then you just slip stitch into that first double crochet. And that is the magic of the magic circle. This one probably could have done with eight in that circle, but uh, yeah, you get the gist. And look, now it's just yarn again. I love that. So those are the most basic building blocks of crochet. You can make a lot with these few stitches. And fancy things like my wiggly rainbow skirt is just double crochets in like different amounts. The scalloping on the rainbow bralette is also just like different amounts of double crochets. It's just the same thing over and over and over and over and over. So if you like repetitive hobbies, things to do with your hands, it is an amazing like fidgety thing when you're sitting watching a movie and it's productive and rewarding and you end up with a thing after. So not only does it keep your brain and your hands busy, it's a really great like fidget if you are neurodivergent or whatever, then you end up with like cute stuff. It's just win, 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 win. But I can't go yet because there are a couple more important things that you need to know to actually finish your project and have it looking all clean and nice. That is tying off, weaving in, blocking, and just a couple other little tricks. So when you're working on a project, and especially if you have multiple different colors of yarn in a project, you're going to end up with these things called tails, which is the end of your yarn after you tie off. And in tying off, you just remove your hook from your loop and pull. I think. I'll do the close-up with my hands and make sure I got that right. And after you've tied off, you need to weave that in. Unless you're doing some sort of like tassel extravaganza, but most of the time you need to weave in. So you're gonna need something called a yarn needle. You can get these plastic or metal. You can get them from, again, any craft store, any yarn aisle. They usually come in a pack with a couple of different sizes. These are fun little colors. I had metal ones and I lost them. They're kicking around somewhere. It's pretty much as simple as it sounds, you're just gonna thread the eye of the yarn needle with your tail and weave it in somewhere inconspicuous. Depending on your project and what the crochet pattern is, you might have to get a little creative. Like on that rainbow bralette, it, I had to do it in the scallops. But my tip that I wish I knew when I started is that you definitely don't want to just weave it in one way and say goodbye because those tails 
as it gets pulled and worn and, you know, just used and loved over time, that tail is going to peek out and then you're going to have a little straggler. You're going to have a little, you're going to have a little, you're going to have a little one of those, you know? So to avoid that, you just want to go in one way, pull it nicely. Don't yank it hard, but just lay it nicely and then weave it the other way around and that leaves it really nice. Give it a little snip and usually he doesn't budge from there. If you have a super duper slippery yarn or if you're making something really bizarre and annoying like our spider harness, our spider web crop top lime green harness thing. It was a nightmare weaving in all of the ends to this. There were probably like 20 to 30 ends and most of it was just chain. So it was like the most annoying, tedious part of crochet just over and over and over and over, but it looks really cool and I love it. But I was really struggling because that was with this organic cotton lime green yarn and it's phrase really easily the different plies, the little threads that make up the yarn would spray out and even woven in one way and then the other. It was still, it was not sitting tight. I actually picked up some liquid stitch and used that. I pinned it to a foamy puzzle tile thing. So it was laid out flat and I used liquid stitch and a brush to painstakingly comb in and just smooch and tuck into bed and paint over all of those little ends with liquid stitch. And I have practiced in that, performed in that, and filmed multiple TikToks in that, and it has absolutely stood up. It hasn't frayed at all. I'm actually really amazed, and it doesn't feel crunchy or anything. I remember being like 13, making my entire cosplays with liquid stitch, like not sewing, but just like, if a seam was this, I would just spray that glue on, just glob and just smush and be like that's a seam but this is a great intended purpose for liquid stitch of oh, just a little tiny tuck in yeah that's my little my little tip from you actually I can't take credit for that tip you know the joy of crochet is that I found that tip from googling my woes and it was like 2008 yarn crochet forum website and like these sweet Kathy Dennis He's like sharing her tips with like Roberta, like sweet old ladies on like an old yarn forum. That just made me happy. So thank you for the tip. It absolutely worked. Now I'll share it to you guys on my own grandma blog. The last, last, last step in any crochet project, and you don't have to do this to all crochet projects, but this is called blocking. Blocking is usually the process of using water in some capacity, whether it be fully soaking it, spraying it, or steaming it, and then you pin your project to a foam board usually like this. You can get boards specifically made for blocking, but I use a big foam puzzle piece like this, and just some normal classic sewing pins. I suppose these could rust if you're doing like a really intensive block, but I haven't had that problem yet. You can get these fancy wooden dowel things as well for blocking and blocking boards that have little like peg holes in them. And this is just to keep the shape of your project, especially if you're doing something like granny squares, coasters, rugs, blankets. I haven't blocked most of my wearables because I don't find it very necessary. I don't really want it to keep like a perfect square shape or anything, but um, my flower rugs absolutely needed to be blocked. I fully soaked them and I pinned them all to those foam mats and it was really really great It helped kind of smush them into place if you guys have any questions at all or if I explained anything poorly or got anything wrong Please don't hesitate to comment down below or if you have any additional tips. I am not an all-knowing person, I am kind of still, I feel like a beginner. It's been years and I've made like a bunch of stuff, but like, I don't know, I feel like I might get some of the lingo or terminology wrong, but I just wanted to share the joy of crochet with you, especially before the holidays. Um, some really excellent holiday gift ideas. If you learn to crochet from this video and you're like, what can I make for my uncle or my grandma or my secret Santa? Coasters are amazing. Scarves are also really easy. It's just a big rectangle. I made a plant hanger that's like macrame, but it's actually like a, just a crochet chain and like tied together. That was super fun. I made a little book cozy for my friend, which is again just a rectangle the size of like a pretty normal book with like an, a little drawstring, which is just a long chain with a little tassel on the end. I have a tassel tutorial in another video, in the pom-pom jacket video, baby. Learn how to make a little tassel. The 
world is your oyster with crochet. So I hope you go forth and stitch and send me on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or wherever. Just comment it. I guess you can't comment photos here. Can you imagine if YouTube comments had photos? Oh no. Yeah, I'd love to see your projects and stitch away with me. This video's Feature Confetti Club member is loafing around the bakery on TikTok who did this wonderful art of me. I love when you get to see the speed paint. It's like a little look inside. So, so, so cool. This is based off of a TikTok that we just posted. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my voice. Yeah, this is the absolute cutest. I just adore it. It's so cool. Your style is so cool. And I love how it translates to the Powerpuff Girls, the friggin' belt, the friggin' weapons, the big hammer. I love this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And this video's, oh, what am I doing? This video's Pixie Loves feature is Citrus Malicious. Citrus Malicious is a really, really lovely TikToker. They do a ton of Gyaru content. They've been really pumping out the Gyaru content lately, and I just think it's super cool, inspiring, and I love seeing what they've been up to. They post really frequently, and like, their, yeah, their content is awesome, so I really think you guys should check them out. I think you would love. Gyaru has been making a major comeback. It has been for a long time, but like, it's happening. It is now. So I think you guys would love them. Go check out. I love you guys so, so, so much. I will see you in the next video, which is not this one, because this one's over. Bye.